Path of Acre is a really nice roguelike game for necromancers, but also minion mancers in general. You begin by creating your character. As you play the game, more variety would be unlocked. There's a total of 24 races to choose from, and lots of them will be great for your minions builds. My favourite races are the Strand, which start with a companion that guards them. It's basically a powerful free minion. They also have a lot of health, which helps. The Albaz, which heal every turn. This makes them great for blood magic. More on that later. The Alhaja, which gain prayer charges on entry. When something happens on entry, it means that it happens when you first enter a level. Extra prayer charges are great if you rely on your god for extra minions, for example. The Valar, who deal death damage to enemies whenever an ally dies. This is really cool for builds where you've got heaps of cheap minions spawning in and dying off all the time. The Kamar, who teleport whenever you stand still. Certain abilities get triggered on teleporting, such as spawning in Astral Warriors if you've gone down that route. Therefore this race can be a great way to go bonkers on loads of minions. The Skeleton, which has low hit points but is resistant to nearly everything. The Arbor, which has very high hit points and spawns free vine minions whenever you stand still. The Morlock, which summons minions on entry for each empty armor slot you have. This is a weird one, and I haven't had much success with it, but it is very interesting. The Cosmar, which has very high willpower. Willpower raises the summon limit and also increases minion damage. And finally the Sarian, which increases its minion limit with dexterity rather than willpower. This would be a good choice if you want minions and high dexterity. Moving on to classes, of which there are another 24 to choose from. My favourites are the Amir, who summons nomad minions on entry. The more glory you have, the more nomads get summoned. Glory is something that accumulates the longer you survive. The Zealot, who gains three additional prayer charges on entry. This is wonderful for any build that worships a god that spawns minions, because you can pray like crazy without having to worry about saving prayer for emergencies. You could combine this with the aforementioned Alhaja race to get four prayer charges on entry, but I've found three to be more than enough so far. The Gala, who heals you and your allies by 1% of your total hit points per empty armor slot when you stand still or pray. The Gala also spawns in a War Priest minion whenever one isn't around. So with this class you can count on always having one minion available, and also lots of healing for you and your minions. The Warlock, who rewards ally death by burning enemies. This would be great for a fire build that relies on a lot of expendable minions. The Druid, who gets serpent minions on entry, stands still, and prayer. On entry the Druid spawns one Cobra Familiar, then on prayer the Druid summons three serpents. Finally, when standing still, the Druid spawns a Hatchling. As you can imagine, Druids are great for minions builds, and you'll be drowning in minions. And finally, the Summoner, whose minions receive an extra 10% life, and plus 10 to hit per point of willpower you have. This will permit very strong or high quality minions. The other great thing about the Summoner is they start with a unique scroll item, which spawns a powerful genie minion on entry. It's one of those weird situations where you never want to get rid of the basic weapon you start with because it's so good. Gods are one of the most interesting aspects of the game. They're very varied and can have a great influence on your character. I like the ones that offer minion skills. My personal favourites are Ninhurs, a goddess of growth and decay. She rewards ally death by growing divine grass where they die, which entangles enemies and grants you healing boosts. Maeta, the goddess of ice and illusions. She grants a bonus to willpower and also rewards you standing still, which causes you to fall deeper and deeper into a divine sleep. Sleeping causes phantasm minions to spawn. If standing still and doing nothing while your minions wreck the enemy is your thing, Meta rewards this playstyle. Dumuzi, god of the gilded tomb. Dumuzi rewards you by transforming armor you pick up into gilded armor, and also by giving you free and powerful gilded undead minions for each known prayer. You start with one known prayer and can have a maximum of three. So this translates into a total of three extra minions. Dumuzi is a rewarding choice for the heavily armored minion mancer. Eresh, goddess of life hunger and the wretched dead. Prayer to her summons slouching dead and the fearsome mouths of Eresh. She rewards you when your allies die by healing you and dealing death damage to enemies. 
As such, she is a great choice for expendable minions builds. Formus, God of the Cosmic Anthill. Choosing Formus as your god means that every turn, ants will spawn in and start attacking the enemy. His prayers are all about buffing the ants and creating more of them. Formus is one of my absolute favourite gods, because the endless ants spawning in is just awesome. Oros, the monster goddess of devouring night. She grants no benefits to minions, but it's interesting because she transforms all items you pick up into lightweight vestiges with very high astral resistance. If you chose Skeleton as your race, this is a great way to offset your innate weakness to astral. Praying to her spawns damaging tentacles and heals you. Faldar, the god of chaos and disembodiment. Faldar causes you to teleport randomly each turn. Similar to the Kamar race I mentioned earlier, if you go for astral minions that spawn in whenever you teleport, this can be a great way to get endless astral warriors. The only problem is the chaotic nature of teleporting everywhere can teleport you right into harm's way. Ikshana is described as a divine eye that once stood at the end of the star path, which makes me think that perhaps Ikshana is not a god like the rest of them. Nevertheless, worshipping Ikshana is one of the best choices for a minion's build. Simply worshipping Ikshana raises your minion's limit by 20, and praying to Ikshana summons pillars that deal different kinds of elemental damage. If you combine this with the Zealot class, you're going to enjoy loads of free pillars roasting enemies. Your character progresses by completing areas. Each area gives you experience, which will grant you points that you can spend on skills, as well as on attributes. The other part is equipment, which can actually have quite a large impact. The attributes are strength, dexterity, and willpower. Willpower is what you typically want for minions, although some builds may use a different attribute for that. Skills are divided up into elements. There's a great variety of elements, and most of them have some minions and a transformation spell. Depending on the skill, minions spawn in different ways. Most minions get spawned once upon entry to a new level, others get spawned in only on praying to your god. Meanwhile, some others spawn in turn by turn, or on a specific action like standing still, teleporting, etc. Most of the magical elements offer cult skills which spawn cultists that worship your personal cult and are basically your fanatics. Martial is all about physical combat in the traditional sense, like beating people with swords and whatnot. Its skills are uninteresting to us. Fire is what you'd expect, but there are some interesting minion skills like Fire Familiar, Flame Cult, and a Newt Form Transformation. Summoning skills within Lightning include Fulminant Cult, Storm Calling, which summons Ball Lightning minions, and the Spark Form Transformation. Poison is great because it provides oozes. The burning ooze skill spawns oozes that deal poison and fire damage. Oozmancy spawns oozes upon prayer, and Poison Familiar summons a pet spider. Finally, with snake form, you're able to transform into a snake. Death is our favorite element because it provides all the undead, but also other things we'd like such as the bat form transformation. Of particular note is the necromancy skill, which spawns skeleton warriors and archers on entry, and cadavers on prayer. Along with the Dread Legion, which spawns stronger undead minions, and also makes other minions count as undead for the sake of effects, and the Blight Cult, which spawns Blight Priests to your side. Ice Element has the Ice Familiar skill, which is great if you want yet another minion, and the Geist Form transformation. Astral is a great element. It has an array of interesting skills like teleportation, along with some nice minions ones. Shimmer Gang spawns Astral Warriors upon entry and teleporting, and Star Cult spawns Astral Cultists. The Psychic Element doesn't have much that's of interest to us, but it does have some things like Mirror Image which makes decoys of you, and a skill that lets you share damage among your minions. Life is a great element because it brings healing, buffs, and even more minions. Invigoration reduces the damage dealt by you to your minions. Arboromancy summons Vine Familiars, Grove Cult summons Nature Cultists, and Overgrowth causes other summoned familiars to be treated as plants, as well as providing plant warriors. Finally, Vine Form lets you transform into a plant. Blood is the final element, and is a delicate balance between damaging yourself and damaging enemies. Blood Familiar summons a goblin made of blood, and Gore Cult summons Gore Cultists. 
The best blood ability is Gore Chant because it summons bleeding undead. I'm sorry that the video doesn't always match up perfectly with what I'm seeing. Editing is hard. It takes actual hours and sometimes I can't be asked making it perfect. Items can be worn or sacrificed. Sacrificing items increases the stats of items you're currently wearing, as well as conferring a permanent health increase. Depending on how you develop your character, you will unlock different prestige classes to choose from. Some of my favorite prestige classes are the Necromancer, which spawns serves free skeletons each turn. If you like undead and want more of them, this is the way to go. The Pain Cleric, which is all about stacking doom at the expense of your minions. Doom is like a buff that accumulates on you and then damages the enemy that hits you, or something like that. Pain Cleric causes minions to take an additional 100 blood damage from you whenever they are damaged, but causes additional doom to accumulate on enemies. Look, I don't really understand it, but what it boils down to is your minions die off really quickly, but so do the enemies and it's pretty fun. You become a big porcupine or echidna. Going Pain Cleric means you're going to need to have a way to replenish all the minions that keep dropping off like flies though. The Wormborn, whoops sorry I meant Wormborn, I had a rambles moment there. The Wormborn is a personal favourite of mine because it causes you to summon a buttload of undead worms on entry, and then more worms every time damage is dealt to you. The Oozmancer is one of my favourite prestige classes. This one summons Oozes in at the start of each turn, which will quickly overwhelm your enemies. This is exactly what I was hoping for from the Oozmancer in Tales of Majael, but unfortunately that one disappointed. Path of Acra has a much better concept of an Oozmancer. I'm scoring Path of Acra a solid 10 out of 10 for its minion mechanics. It ticks all the boxes and is probably the best roguelike for minions I've ever played. It does everything Rift Wizard did, but better. It doesn't have the story of Tales of Majael, but makes up for it by having better gameplay in my opinion. Sorry Picked, I know you love Tome and it's a great game, but I must admit that I prefer the gameplay in Path of Acra. Another thing I really love about Path of Acra is its music and art. The music is very good and fits the game well. Some of the art is quite bad in my opinion, but most of it is good and it has a spooky vibe that I appreciate quite a lot. As far as pixel art goes, it's good. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it to be informative. I've got more videos on necromancy stuff coming soon.